What's up, my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy. Welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business, where today we have a book review for you guys. This one's been a long time coming. If you remember a couple months ago, I made a video reacting to Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro's sidekick friend where he was reacting to reviewers who gave him negative reviews on his book, Johnny the Walrus. Now, when I did that video, I was kind of coming from it from the author angle, from the angle of someone who writes children's books myself, who was talking about how Matt Walsh was approaching the situation and making authors look bad by coming after reviewers. And I said in that video that when the book actually releases, I will do a full review of it. And here it is. Today is that day. You guys may also notice that lately my friend Emma Thorne and I have been reviewing a lot of books together and that is because we had this discussion where we're like what if we took all of these like kind of cringy politically motivated books like this one and ladies first the MAGA hat romance and the girl defined book and stuff and we're like what if we made a series where we just review all of the bad ones together and turns out a lot of people were interested in seeing so that's something we're doing now so this is the latest installment of that I hope you guys enjoy it but first before we get into the depths of the review a quick word from today's sponsor Today's video is sponsored by Magic Spoon, a high-protein, low-carb breakfast cereal that comes in a variety of awesome flavors. Do you guys remember in the beginning of 2021 when I tried to host live streams while I was cooking? And do you remember how in one of them I had to end the stream early because I almost set an oven mitt on fire? Oh my god, am I setting the, the pot holder on fire? Yeah, I set the pot holder on fire. Yeah, in case you guys haven't noticed, cooking really isn't my strong suit. Combine that with the fact that I'm constantly working on this channel, on my company Forever Home Friends, and on my novels. Well, as you guys can guess, I don't really have a ton of time to think about cooking and meal prep and all of that. So that's why I'm really grateful that one of my meals each day is already taken care of. I know I can plan to have a bowl of tasty cereal every day, which will provide me with the protein I need while I'm working on weightlifting, and it won't cost me to set anything on fire. Magic Spoon cereals have 13 to 14 grams of protein and only 4 net grams of carbs in each serving. They all have 0 grams of sugar with the exception of the new honey nut flavor which has 1 gram of sugar per serving because of the real honey they use to make it. Magic Spoon cereals also have only 140 calories per serving and are keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb. You can build your very own variety box and choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, maple waffle, blueberry, and cinnamon, plus the new reformulated honey nut flavor that will now be added to the permanent collection. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you your money, no questions asked. And also, for my Canadian and British viewers, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and to the UK as well. So guys, if this cereal sounds good to you, go ahead and click the link in my description below and use the code SAVVY to get $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com slash savvy to save $5 on your order today. Also, I want to thank my Patreon supporters for continuing to support this channel and make it amazing. Patreon supporters' names are on the screen and linked in the description below. You can find Patreon supporters who give $5 a month and up and their links to their own businesses or causes or social media pages or their own channels, so definitely check that out as well. Really appreciate you guys being awesome. Let's review this monstrosity of walrus-sized proportions. Hit you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. Why do you follow me? If you don't already own a book. Bucks? It's 
it and taking a cab to go down and talk to somebody about how you can find a job. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Savvy and Emma's series where we review every shitty politically motivated book in existence because... You guys liked it when we did the Girl Defined book. You liked it when we did the, I still got it, the Ladies First, the MAGA Hat Romance book. So there's more of these to come. So let's 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 keep it going. Yeah, keep suggesting them because we love doing it. Yeah, keep suggesting them. Today we're going to be reviewing Johnny the Walrus by Matt Walsh. Yay. This uh, wonderful board book. We can even just read the whole thing on the video because it's so short. I did a video in the past talking about this book but I didn't really talk it that much about the book. I mostly talked about how rude Matt Walsh has been responding to reviewers who don't like it, which is just like, regardless of if your book is good or bad, that's just like a rude thing to do in the author community. You just don't want, it just looks unprofessional and rude. So I just thought he was being rude. But now that I'm giving an official review of this book, maybe he will dislike me. I will say there are some things in this book that are hilarious. So I will give him that. I will, I, but not really him. Everything he wrote in the book sucks. The The art is what's hilarious, so we'll get into that. Johnny the Walrus is written by Matt Walsh. It's called A Tale of Identity and Imagination. That's what it says on the back. Illustrations by Kay Reese. And when I first looked at this book in the video of Matt reading it to a bunch of kids, I thought the art looked like shitty stuff that I would have done in GIMP in high school. Like, I thought it looked like Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff Tier type of art. But then... <laughs> me too, right? I mean, it, and it is, but I actually kind of like it now that I've gotten to see the art up close in the book because yeah, it's shit, but like, I think that's part of the joke. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with the art now that I've seen it like all together. So we'll, we'll talk about the art a little more. Um, have you read this? No, I have not read okay. it firsthand. I've okay. just watched reviews where okay. people have read it. So... And so, yeah, I, I think I said to you offline, my favorite thing in the world is the video that Matt Walsh posted himself <laughs> to his channel of him yeah. reading it to a group of children. Yeah. And so I got the story from that and I thought, story doesn't really make sense. But also, wow, here is a man who does not know what children want oh, or how to talk to them. <laughs> um, so one, we'll get your live reaction to the full book itself, which will be awesome. Yeah, and two... Wait. Uh, so that's part of the context that I want to give around whether the book sucks on purpose or not. It's very unclear, and Matt himself is not consistent on it. Like, Matt Walsh is kind of a troll. We've talked about this before. We called him a Schrodinger's douchebag. How much of what he's saying is part of the joke versus how much is completely true versus how much is he saying ironically to prove the point of what he thinks is true wildly depends based on the argument someone else is making back to him. I'll get into an example of that in a moment. But the basic controversy behind this book is that it's it's a book called Johnny the Walrus, and Matt Walsh is pretty uh, upfront about the fact that this book is supposed to be an anti-transgender allegory. He categorized it in the LGBT category on Amazon, uh, got, a, uh, got a bunch of people to order it at once, because here's, in case anyone doesn't know how Amazon bestsellers work, right? You, you put something in a category on Amazon and Amazon's rankings are updated by category hourly. So if you put something in a specific category and then get like everyone to order it in the same hour, it'll jump to the top for that hour. So I'm imagining he and his marketing team probably had some coordinated effort. Oh, maybe they didn't, but that's usually what happens when someone jumps to the top of a category. So he jumps to the top of an Amazon category, was the number one best-selling LGBT children's author for a little bit and is now using that to market himself, but he's using it to market himself somewhat sarcastically. So I think he's like, I think it's part of the joke for him, which is, it's not, it's a very mean spirited joke. So we'll get into that. But I, I do want to point out that I think if you argue with Matt Walsh as if everything he's saying is 100% serious, it's not going to go very far because he's, he's a Schrodinger's douchebag, as, as we call him. Yeah, it's a great tactic to yeah. uh, never be wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it's... if you if you're wrong, then you were just joking. But if people agree with you, then you're a hundred percent accurate, and that's a great way to sell a book to a lot of people. <laughs> exactly, that's what he does here. So this book is published by the Daily Wire, which is Ben Shapiro's company. So guys, know what we've I, I've reviewed Ben Shapiro's books. We'll review together some more Ben Shapiro books in the future. Uh, ben Shapiro is uh, famously anti-LGBTQ. 
Uh, Matt Walsh now is as well with this book. So the basic controversy surrounding this book is that it is the tale of a boy named Johnny who wants to, who wants to pretend to be a walrus. Johnny's mom posts about it on Twitter and everyone on Twitter tells her that Johnny should be trans walrus. And so then she takes Johnny to the doctor who tries to give Johnny a trans walrus procedure. And it's supposed to be about how ridiculous it supposedly is to be trans. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it doesn't really work and we'll get into why, but first let's just kind of take a look at the book itself. Johnny's a boy with a big imagination. And guys, I'll stop to point out some of the fantastic art in this when we get there. <laughs> One day he's a dog, the next day a crustacean. One morning he came downstairs barking and clapping. Okay, so here's where the art gets kind of great. Because you guys can see this, the art, the art sucks, right? But, first of all, look at this. Johnny's mom has a little home sweet home sign up on the wall. And this is what's hard to see in the background. I'm trying to figure out the uh, the symbolicism of this. You've got a picture of Johnny as a baby right here. You can see that. And right next to him is Matt Walsh as a baby. But Matt Walsh as a baby has a full beard. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what is this supposed to mean? At first I was like, is it implying that Matt Walsh is Johnny's dad because he's in the photo with Johnny? But then you look at Matt Walsh in this picture it is thing that obviously looks just like him with the glasses, the beard, and the head shape and all of that. But he is crawling on the floor and has a diaper. <laughs> so I'm like, wait, no, this is supposed to be Matt Walsh as a baby in the picture. But also, he has a full beard. So I'm like, I don't know what the, what that's supposed to mean, but like, I'll just take it. It's kind of funny. Like, it's Maybe funny. it was I'll just give... for the lols. That's yeah, his cameo. Think... So, I, and I love that Johnny's mom has, like, boss babe shit on the walls. It's, like, kind of hilarious. Because, <laughs> like, over here, it's supposed to have this sign that's, like, home is my happy place in the boss babe font. <laughs> so it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Wood spoons for tusks and sock fins a flapping. I'm Johnny the walrus, he said with a roar. The wood floors my ocean and the carpets my shore. Johnny's mom loves her son's make-believe time. And then, of course, Johnny's mom's got a little yoga mat over here. <laughs> She's got yoga mat. I'm confused about the 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 rooms in the art. It feels like they're pinging around the house or something. Is it, it's, or does the location just keep the decor keep changing? I think the location keeps changing because Johnny's supposed to be running around the house. Either that okay. or it's like because like he's he's kind of in the kitchen here, and he's kind of he's running through the kitchen. Now he's in the living room. Okay, I think he's on a walrus will... rampage. <laughs> yes, I will say I think it's kind of funny. I'm not sure if Johnny's mom, and this is what I'm, I'm getting at, I, I, maybe I'm reading too much into this book, which is partially a troll effort, but I'm thinking that maybe John is supposed to represent the, like, performative white liberal lady. <laughs> In which case, that's really funny, because, like... <laughs> Johnny's mom is over invested in, in all of this in the book and I mean she's a really stupid character as is everyone else but then it's like mm. the oh look she's the she's the white lady that does yoga and she has the live laugh love side and she just wants to be supportive to, to the detriment of everyone so like I again Matt Walsh didn't write any of this this is all shown in the art like the art's what's funny in this That's, Matt Walsh didn't do shit we'll talk in a second about why Matt Walsh's writing sucks in this but the art is funny you're Johnny the walrus till you change your mind but Johnny's mom's phone said it's not just pretend so first of all she's got the giant live laugh love <laughs> sign on the wall right here um and then she's posted Johnny on Instagram over here um, she's got her little Starbucks cup with a little, it's, it's hard to see from here, but it's a walrus in the Starbucks logo. <laughs> like, when I saw the art from a distance, I was like, this is lazy, stupid art, but up close, I'm like, no, the art is committed to a bit on this, and this is kind of, a kind of It is. Actually. I, 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 it's almost too much, though. <laughs> it's almost too much. It's, like, almost too much. And also, uh, that's, that's, like, that, the art sort of changes my mind slightly on the book and who it's for. Yeah, because I wasn't sure if I my sort of reaction to this initially was like, why didn't they do a joke book for adults instead? Because like I said, there's that video of him reading it to kids and kids right. do not get it. I was like, do it as a joke book for adults. But then when there's little details in the drawings that kids wouldn't get. Yeah, it kind of feels like that is for the like the parents or adults. So maybe that's kind of OK. I don't know. Exactly. I'm still trying to figure it out if it's for 
if it's a joke book for the parents or if it is actually for kids. And we'll talk in a second about what Matt Walsh has actually said about it himself because he changes, again, this is what he does. He changes which he says it is based on what the argument against him is because yeah. Matt Walsh is a rude guy. He sucks. Oh my god, I just, wait, holy shit. I just realized something else about the art. Okay. I didn't even notice this in the- Guys, last time I read this book all the way through and looked at the art, I was pre-gaming to go to the club. I got <laughs> drunk. I was getting drunk with my friends in the living room. One of my friends was like, Savvy, I need to see the Johnny the Walrus book in person. So I pulled it out and we were reading through it, noticing the art and getting drunk. And I'm like, I was drunk texting Emma about this. And of course she lives in British land. So the next day she, she didn't see the text cause she's asleep when I'm getting drunk. So she, the next day she's like, oh my God, are you pre-gaming with Johnny the Walrus? <laughs> what a mood. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But this is really far away. So I'm going to try to bring this as close to the camera as possible. So it says, only a bigot would say that. How dare you offend? And this is the phone? Okay. The people, the people that are leaving the negative comments, their profile pictures are reminiscent of those, like, some of the people who went viral in the feminist cringe compilations of 2015. Like, they're real people. So if you remember, like, I think, like, 2015 or 16... There was, there was a lot of, like, anti-feminist stuff online that got really popular around then. There was that one of the lady with the short red hair and the glasses who's, like, screaming and then her face became a meme. Yeah. So this one right there is her. You can see. Like the, uh. It's, oh, yeah! That one's her. This one is the, the girl who got mad at the college speech where, yeah. what's her name? What, oh, my God. She was, like, the functional feminist. That's not what her name was. It wasn't that. Christine Hoff Summers. I don't remember what her actual, uh, was that her name? Christine Hoff? Something like that. Uh, it was this, uh, oh, the factual feminist, I think is what her name was. Uh, she was this uh, kind of controversial person who was like, I'm a feminist, but I'm not like other feminists. Or like, she kind of had different views on it. And when she spoke at a college campus, there was this girl in the audience kind of protesting her and yelling. And she went viral for that. And so that's, that's that girl right there. Wow. Um, I'm not sure who the other ones are, but those two I recognized from, like, those viral, like, feminist cringe compilations from back in the day. Wow, that is a detail. Like, that that's- is commitment that's com to detail. <laughs> right? And, like, the, none of the people in this protest look to be based on anyone real, so, like, you have to look in the details for it. And I'm like, holy yeah. shit, dude, this art is committed. Um... So that it's like, Johnny's a real walrus, they're holding up protest signs when Johnny goes to the doctor. So, okay, so Johnny goes to the woke doctor who says, you'll need to eat worms and put on gray makeup. The worms give you whiskers, the gray blends you in. Okay, so the best detail in this is that the doctor's HD certificate has a blue Twitter check mark on it. That's his certification. As a blue like, that's actually a pretty good joke. I'm not going to lie because there is yeah. a problem with people getting certified to say things like being like blue check marked on Twitter and people taking that as a sign of authority. When in reality, it's kind of arbitrary who gets the blue check mark and who doesn't, at least in my experience. So like, I'm like, that's a pretty good joke about how stupid Twitter is. Again, all the good jokes are in the art. Some of the art jokes are rude, too, but like. Hmm. At least they're jokes. I feel like the book itself doesn't have any real jokes. The art has at least some jokes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, we get the Tusk body horror shit where it's like... Oh, this bit, yeah. Yeah, where the doctor Scary. threatens to chop off Johnny's feet. It says that a simple procedure cuts feet into fins. It's gross eating worms, Mom. They're all so dang twitchy. And then the worms jar says, Wormones on it. <laughs> <laughs> wood spoons kind of hurt and the makeup is itchy deep down johnny's mom knew that something was wrong so of course johnny's mom uh she's at the th there's a, like a baseball bat with an american flag on it uh-huh um but she felt so much pressure she just went along so now johnny's like doing the ice bucket challenge i guess <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, oh, I think it's supposed to be that he's a like, walrus. He's, he's supposed to be a walrus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then the internet people knew just what to do. So over here, this person has a he, him, walrus pronoun sign. Because walrus is a pronoun, as we all know. Johnny is very proud of walrus self. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. I feel like a lot of times people who 
make fun of pronouns don't understand what they are. Like, that yeah. part of speech. So people will be like, I don't use pronouns. Like, you just said I, dude. I got called a pronoun user on Twitter. And I was like, yeah, I speak in full sentences. If that's, you're using a pronoun in the stupid sentence. <laughs> I will say, Chewie literally doesn't use pronouns. That's how, che well, a few years ago, that's how we decided Chewie would talk to us when we do Chewie's voice. He doesn't use articles yeah. or pronouns when he talks. He'll be like, oh. hello, human, Chewie want to go outside. <laughs> Please give Chewie snack. That's how he talks. So he doesn't use pronouns. That is fine. That is acceptable. But if you, So if you want to talk like my dog in the way that Tyler and I do a fake dog voice, like you can, you can choose not to use pronouns, I guess, but that'll be, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of a difficult way to speak. <laughs> so it says and mommy was told to take john to the zoo so this is the mw zoo which i imagine stands for matt walsh i guess yeah when johnny arrived the walruses grunted my boy's a real walrus his growth was just stunted the zookeeper thought what's she talking about and then of course johnny has his little uh suitcase which has a video game controller and a sticker that says boys rule <laughs> <laughs> just to hammer home that Johnny didn't want to transition at all. Johnny's a boy, damn it, a boy. Then the zookeeper is literally Matt Walsh. Yeah. So he even has a name tag that says Walsh on him. And so I'm like, okay, was the Matt Walsh in the frame at home? So is the zookeeper? Why does the mom have a baby picture of the zookeeper <laughs> in her house? What if this is the Matt Walsh world? Every <laughs> fifth person is Matt Walsh. He's just been multiplied. Everyone who transitions, transitions into Matt Walsh. That's the only oh, type he'll God. support. <laughs> uh, Ma'am, that's just a boy with wood spoons in his mouth. But if I believe that, they'll say I'm phobic. <laughs> <laughs> Protecting your son, ma'am, is what's most heroic. At oh, Matt Walsh is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> what a hero. <laughs> At last, Johnny's mommy was able to see that Johnny's not what he's pretending to be. Now mommy ignores the mean things on her phone while Johnny pretends he's a bird flying home. The last few pages have no interesting art on it. So. Yeah. But anyway, that is Johnny the Walrus by I Matt Walsh. Did not, I did not realize until now that it's literally Matt Walsh that saves the day in his own kid's yes. work. Yes. I didn't it's know that. It's literally him. He <laughs> saves the day. And that boy's name was Matt Walsh. Literally, he swoops in. <laughs> and everybody him. clapped. Yeah. Everybody clapped their little Clap. walrus flippers like this. <laughs> no, that's not a walrus. That's like a seal. <clears throat> I don't know what sound a walrus makes. Well, when Johnny was a walrus, Barks. he was clapping at the beginning, so... Yeah, I think they Maybe... clap and bark. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow, so what a ride. So the issue here is that, you know, when I reacted to this in the past of Matt Walsh reading this to kids and things like that, this book it really obviously isn't for kids because the story wouldn't make any sense to kids. It's not kind of at the level that they're thinking at. It's not wouldn't be entertaining to them. The kids in the room in the video where he's reading it to them are super bored. They don't yeah. seem interested. And Samantha Lux pointed this out in the video that she made reacting to it. So then Matt Walsh, of course, because he's a dick and can't take a bad book review, uh, made a video responding to her. And he basically said, well, obviously the book's not for kids. Uh, I made this book to prove a point that if kids can't even understand this little story, then they can't, they're, they obviously don't understand if they want to be trans or not. Like kids can't make a decision about their gender if they're too underdeveloped to understand this story even. So the book was like to make a point. I'm like, okay, then one, why were you reading it to kids at all? Like, that's exactly my question. Them for your little experiment. Like that's actually kind of exploiting kids, dude. That's really weird. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's for kids or not, because then when I read the reviews on Amazon, a lot of M Matt Walsh's fans will be like, I bought this for my kids or I bought this for, you know, my friend's kids or like people are saying they're actually buying it for their kids. And I don't know if they're being serious. Yeah. So whether or not this is for kids, I mean, the fact that it's a board book is a little weird because it's it takes a like. From my time working as a children's author, I've never been able to print board books for my books because they're way more expensive. To print a full board book in color is a lot of money to print. I already uh, pay a decent amount to print paperback books with pages just in color. So to print mm. a hardcover book with full board pages, generally, you're not going to want to spend time printing a book with uh, like a full board book unless you're actually intending like a two to three year old to be reading it because... 
they you know they get weird with the pages and the whole point is that they're they're not going to tear the book apart so if you mm-hmm. want it to be sturdy for a young child the idea is that you wouldn't waste money printing it in a board book form unless you're actually intending to give it to a child yeah and i'm so, pretty sure it was marketed towards children right oh it was yeah like and then on I'm Amazon. like, is this part of his joke? Or is he just saying it's not for children now that it's getting bad reviews of being a bad book for children? Yeah. I mean, there's clearly some kind of troll effort here from the beginning, but it's also like, it's a pretty big commitment to a troll bit to spend extra money to get the book printed in board book format because that's yeah. way more expensive. So I'm like, I mean, Ben Shapiro's company published this. Is Ben Shapiro going to decrease profit margins that doesn't seem like a very capitalist thing to do so i'm just very confused now about what the actual goal of this is and honestly Mm. i think that matt just changes his mind depending on who's talking to him about it oh definitely definitely yeah so i could spend time talking about all the ways that it's a stupid book for kids and they won't understand it and then matt will come back and be like yeah that's the point because kids don't understand all this trans ideology bullshit and then i could make a point about how um the book is just clearly an, a, a troll effort or something. And then people will be like, no, my kids loved it. And it's like, what Matt's actually doing is going to depend. You know, he's he, he he's like Mac on It's Always Sunny. He plays both sides to always come out on top. That's Matt mm-hmm. Walsh. Yeah, 100%. He seems to be under the impression or he seems to be wanting to spread the idea that when a kid is questioning if they're trans, that one, that universally the parents are going to be immediately supportive and want to do everything and that too that they're going to be able to get instant medical intervention about it which is just not true in general um a lot of people who have reviewed this book who are trans people have pointed out like you know get it like the scene with the with the scary surgery thing that's meant to be terrifying and things like that that doesn't happen to kids like actual surgery surgical procedures that people get happen after they're adults and then matt will bring up like no it does happen to kids but he never brings up any examples of when um i will say i have heard of top surgery being done on people who are maybe 16 17 i've never heard of any surgery being done on anyone younger than 16 mm-hmm. um, there's a sliding scale of what is considered an adult in different countries right and i think the just for example in the uk versus the us the sort of the age you considered an adult would be lower so yeah. that might that there, there would be a way for matt walsh to say oh it does happen to kids right just sort of by just skewing the language like that but also like all of my trans friends have like the ones who have had surgery are few and far between most of them are still waiting because yeah. it takes so long and yeah. so much fighting to get through the system yes. that it's insane. It, it would be like an amazing fantasy world if you could get to the doctor that fast and actually <laughs> discuss right. your options. It would be amazing. That's just so far from reality. Yeah, I'm just kind of waiting for Matt Walsh or someone who agrees with him on this to show me some kind of proof that it is, like, the second your three-year-old tells you they are interested in potentially being a different gender, that the doctors are, like, instantly, like, let's change your genitals right now. Because literally every trans, yeah, every trans person I know has either, either even some trans adults, like, put off getting bottom surgery to wait until they're able to, like, freeze eggs or sperm to have kids and then after that start doing that so that they can secure that or Mm -hmm. the surgery so expensive that they spend a lot of time fundraising for it or the waiting lists are so long because there's not a ton of reputable doctors that do it so there's just like a lot of barriers in the way you generally have to wait a long enough time that by the time you get it you're usually going to be very sure and you're usually going to be an adult and now if we want to debate like is it ethical to get this at 16 versus at 18 versus at 21 like okay That's a discussion to have, but the idea that, like, a kid who's, like, five years old is going to ever get this, it just has never happened. And I'm waiting for him to prove to me that a prepubescent child has ever received a trans surgery before. Like, ever. He needs to just give me one example, because I've literally never heard of a case of it happening. Yeah. I think, I mean... (sighs) The problem is if I if I say what I think is happening, it's very easy for people who think that way to just deny it but i think the whole surgery kids are having surgery kids are getting hormones and those things that they know are not true is kind of a cover for being like like a very traditional conservative view of like what 
gender should be in kids is like you know letting boys wear skirts or yeah. letting a kid use different pronouns or change the name it's just the purely social things that aren't medical that aren't right. like some sort of you know that that can be changed and like it's the stuff that isn't that important I feel like the sort of scary science medical side of it is just a cover to make it more acceptable to have those views. Right. I think that's the case a lot of the time anyway. Yeah, because I think I, I think this is just a weird like straw man that I think they're trying to like come up with an argument that was never there in the first place. Like I don't I don't I have never heard of a doctor actually wanting to do these procedures to children. And I don't know any trans people that would even support that either. Because mm -hmm. the only thing I have seen is uh, puberty blockers, which everything I've seen about them has been reversible. And you would do that under a doctor's supervision. Yeah. So I, I don't see the issue with that. And again, you wouldn't take those when you're five years old. You would take them maybe when you're like 12, 13, and you would do them with a doctor and a psychologist, and you're regularly checking in to make sure everything's working for you. So there's there's a lot of uh, safeguards set up in this situation. And regardless, a kid Johnny's age if Johnny were to say, Mom, I think I'm a girl, Johnny's mom might just be like, okay, Johnny, what does that mean to you? What What about being a girl do you think fits with you? If Johnny's mom is supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, the other weird thing is that in this book, Johnny never even said he wanted to be a walrus. He just was pretending to be a walrus. So, yeah. like, I don't think, like, I've never seen it where, like, if a kid pretends to be the other gender for fun that the parent would automatically be like, oh, let's get you transitioned right away. I think that's kind of a myth they make up that, like, trans-affirming parents are going to immediately push their kids into it. Again, if well, there's a parent out there doing that, you got to show them to me because I've never seen this happen. Well, it's, I think she's she's not initially, right, in the book. She's just yeah. taking a picture of her son playing at being a walrus, yeah. and then it's the internet, it's the, the feminist yeah. mob that yeah. is like which is a weird <laughs> choice as weird. well yeah um she's just like it's like the parent is immediately swayed by people and again i have never seen and it, it probably has happened somewhere because the internet is vast and horrifying but i've never seen like a parent put like a picture of you know i don't know uh their, their little boy in a fairy costume i've yeah. never seen a comment section full of you've got to get this child's surgery immediately this this just i don't think that's a thing. <laughs> I've never seen it. Why do you follow me? If you don't already own a book. Why do you follow me? Unfollow me. Why do you follow me? Unfollow me. Why do you follow me? Unfollow me. Why do you follow me?